Welcome back to The Breakfast and good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going straight to the newspapers this morning. Let's see what major stories that we can share with you, making headlines across uh, Nigeria today. I'm going to start with stories from the Punch uh, newspapers. Uh, this one here, it says, uh, it should be on your screen just a few seconds. It says, Secundus fate uh, uncertain. PDP governors meeting deadlocked. NWC reps divided. Six NWC members insist on chairman's resignation. Secundus says, I will not resign. We will continue meeting tomorrow. Issues will be resolved as a family, says Tamuwal. Sit at home order, eight killed as IPOB's order turns bloody. Gunmen attack Anambra Police Division, kill four cops, cut away weapons. Also on the punch, shake up in NNPC, senior management staff redeployed, COO sacked. Petrol, uh, petrol truck crushes siblings sitting in Neko and three others in Oyo. That's a sad story also. Uh, court remands shoot him out for 30 days over Super TV CEO's death. Customs van chasing smugglers crushes seven in Katsina, vehicle burnt. And Ogun denies involvement as monarch withdraws Okorocha's chieftaincy title. Two fraudsters forfeit three Lagos duplexes and 200 million naira and vehicles also to federal government. Nine rescued as pastor and wife and 11 others are kidnapped in Kwara. Gunmen did demand 30 million naira. And lawyers battle for sureties as uh, Igboho's loyalists remain in custody. Those are the stories on the punch. On the Nation newspaper, PDP governors, elders decide Secundus' fate today. Six National Working Committee members says their chairman must go, but Secundus declares that he won't resign. COVID-19, rising cases in Lagos, Akwa Ibom, worrisome. Fraud stars forfeit 530 million naira, cars, houses, the government. Accused plead guilty. Okoro had to lose 500 properties in Imo to Imo government. Court remands Chidima over Super TV CEO murder. Federal government striking doctors resume talks. Five dead in Ibadan tanker crash. 14 feared dead in IPOB shut down in the east. Rivers Council crippled. Courts voids federal government's power to collect VAT income tax in rivers. Shake up in NNPC. Cholera killed 816 in seven months. Abductors of Commissioner demands 500 million naira. All right. And out of the Nigerian Tribune this morning. The big one there says PDP crisis. Secundus adamant as six NWC members ask him to resign. Governors meet party chair, reconvene today. Protests at Secretariat, Splinter Reps uh, Caucus emerges. Also, IPOB sit at home, four fear killed, vehicles burnt as economic activities are shut down in southeast states. Uh, two siblings and three others killed as petrol tanker crushes taxi in Ibadan. Supreme Court verdict in Ondo, crack in APC Governor's Forum. Lagos Assembly approves full takeover of Lekki Concession Company. And cholera killed 816 in 22 states within seven months. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, court stops federal government from collecting VAT, says it is state tax. And reps fail to stop resident doctor strike. Meeting continues today. Uh, court orders permanent for feature of properties linked to Okorocha. Okay, I think we can also take the story on the Guardian newspaper. Um, a repetition of the ones we've seen before about Secundus, PDP governors, six hours meeting deadlocked. Um, court declares RSG, not FIRS. All right. Um, still on The Guardian this morning. Um, striking doctors and reps fail to reach agreement. Resume talks today. Garba Dean returns as NNPC spokesperson and court orders final forfeiture of Okorocha's a property to Imo state government. Bloody sit at home order for Kanu's release, uh, for Kanu's release ground southeast. And uh, I think finally we can take this morning, uh, well, I think I, I spoke that already, in Malaria kills nine Nigerians hourly, says Minister. Mr. Wandu, good morning once again. Thank you for having me. Welcome, sir. All right, so let's start with uh, the PDP crisis. Uh, you know, the newspapers uh, this morning, all of them reporting about the same thing, saying six NWC members ask uh, Uchi Secundus to resign. He is still adamant. And the meetings, of course, continue today. 
Um, what do you think is playing out here? Well, it's 2023 that is playing out. Um, the soul of um, the party is now at stake, and um, everybody is trying to strategize for 2023. Both uh, the Hawks, the other, others um, within the party, wants to make sure that they position themselves properly for things to come. Um, uh, my only worry with PDP is that since 2015, PDP have not been able to uh, deliver uh, <clears throat> on his mandate as an opposition party. Uh, we saw how APC did it prior to the 2015 election, but um, PDP seems to uh, simply go to bed and um, we are not doing what they are supposed to do. Um, um, being the alternative voice, um, especially for Nigerians, when it comes to some of the things and activities of the APC. Second to that is the fact that I wonder why PDP is going through this now. Um, when current uh, national executive of their party <clears throat> have just about three months to spend um, before the end of their tenure, I think their tenure ends in December. So why is it that they are not waiting for December, just three months to last for them to be able to conduct another convention to elect uh, new executive members. But as I said, it just goes beyond us. What most ordinary Nigerians see, our politicians don't see. So they see, uh, they know it all. And um, uh, what we just believe that um, is the ordinary to the politician is not. One day or uh, one hour may be just too long for a politician. And anything can change at the beginning time. And more worrisome is the fact that also uh, uh, the person spearheading the exit of um, the national chairman of PDP is also the same person that uh, practically brought him and he is from the same state with him. Second, that is the governor of River State. I don't know what the issues uh, between Secondus and uh, Winke is, but um, it's obvious that Winke wants to see the back of Secondus. But the governors, after the statement of the meeting, uh, say that they're meeting again today. So let's see what they, they will come out with. The NWC already, uh, members have already taken their stand. Six against three, um, six, not three. Three have sent, uh, have sent themselves from the, the voting. So, but six voted for uh, Secondos to uh, to leave. Is he going to get the Oshomale, um kind of part <laughs> on the back? Uh, let's wait and see what happens in the next uh, 24 hours. Okay, well, some other person who is going through his own uh, bit of crisis is uh, former Governor of Imo State, Rocha Sokorocha. Um, there is, of course, talk of him forfeiting almost uh, up to 500 properties to the Imo State government, uh, allegedly owned by him. Uh, how do you see that also? Uh, well, it has been a misgrill grill for Rocha Sokorocha in the, next, in the past 24 to 48 hours. Yes, the High Court in the uh, um, um, say that um, forfeit. Um, those properties, some of the most of them, according to the court, were government properties which he illegally acquired. And if it's, if that's the case, then definitely he has no choice than to forfeit it. But um, it's just a high court um, judgment. He might decide to appeal at the court of appeal, and he might even take us to all to the Supreme Court. Within the same 24 hours, Richards also have been stripped of a, a chief title to being given him by a monarch in Ogun State. I'm sure you must have read that too. Yes. In addition to that, he has also said that uh, he's going to build an Islamic um, university in Dara, um, the home state of the president for the future of the president. So that, I say, is a misgrave for him in the past 48 hours. Um, but I'm from Imo State. And um, if, for, if for whatever, and it is found out that uh, most of those properties that uh, Richard's claim to be his, uh, our properties of the state government or that we are built on land belonging to the state government, our uh, land belonging to us as individuals, then we have the ordinary right to um, get that back from him. But as I said, I, it's not yet over. Uh, I see him appealing at the court of appeal and that we might take up to, it will take some other years, some years um, before we can finally get the final verdict on this, uh, probably at the Supreme all right, and then let's also speak, uh, well, stay in the southeast now, where uh, yesterday was uh, declared Ghost Monday um, around the southeast. Some states complied, you know, to a larger percent. 
are some others. But of course, um, the sad part is the report of uh, death. It says about four officers and uh, you know other places were torched. Four officers reportedly died. Um, I was saying earlier that the IMP will be, if they keep up with the way they are going, they're going to completely lose the goodwill that they had with you know people in the southeast, whatever goodwill they had. I tend to agree with you. Um, most of the states, um, um, people from the southeast comply with the directive. Basically. But let me put this into context. Uh, com uh, compliance is not uh, at, uh, because, the, because of obedience. <laughs> But because of the fear by the people that um, uh, security agencies might not be able to protect them, so people decide to stay at home. It's not because they are totally in support of IPOP or what, um, because of their support of Namibian, uh, but because of the fear of violence and our security agencies' inability to protect them, and even the state government inability to protect right. them. So and that's also something. Mr. Wonder, Mr. Wonder, apologies. Uh, we're going to go back. Or we're going to go on a short break for like a few seconds and we'll get back to you so you can finish up your thoughts on that story. Welcome once again to The Breakfast uh, and back to Off the Press with Chris Wandu. Uh, welcome back, sir. You're sharing your thoughts on the IPOB uh, issues in the southeast. Uh, some of the papers report about 14 people lost their lives yesterday. Some say four, some say six. Uh, kindly go ahead, sir. Yes, as I was saying, um, compliance um, is not totally because of um, obedience um, or because of solidarity on the part of the people, but because our security agencies and the government of the various states in the southeast, uh, people see them are not being able to protect them if they start going about their businesses and rest of them. So we also saw pockets of videos where um, IPOP members were going from one point to the other, destroying people's uh, properties. I, I saw the woman that was cooking and they put away her food. Uh, we saw the one that opened up her back and that threw the way. But the one that was more worrisome is the, was the alleged burning of um, uh, buses, uh, commercial buses, um, apparently that were conveying people. And one of those buses I saw um, a, a passenger or somebody that was bought with the bus, um, that video cannot be verified, but it, but it we had it happened within the start. If that is the situation, I can tell you with, with all sense of um, humility that the way I put it, I put is going about his activities, he may start losing um, um, the support of the people, whether you like it or not, it will start losing the support of people. And at a point, you push people to a point, they will react. And that would be very dangerous and inimical to the activities of uh, iPod. If people start reacting, people can also take up arms and start fighting iPod. And that is uh, that would be more dangerous than we are, what we are currently um, sitting. So I think they should be very, very, very careful. I don't know, and I still, nobody has been able to tell me how declaring every Monday uh, a, a public holiday, we sweat the activities of the court in releasing Nam the can <laughs> that's counterproductive. The court will not listen to that. The court will take a decision based on the facts on ground. And um, so if I will continue going that route, yes, we can uh, you, we, some level of solidarity here and there, but shutting down, by shutting down the activities in the within the southeast is also going to hurt the people. The businesses will go to the collapse. There are some people that make their that make their ends meet on a daily basis. If they don't go out on a daily basis, they cannot eat. So you are adding to the suffering of your people. You are you are trying to uh, to protect. Uh, yes. So to me, it's counterproductive. I think they should look for other strategic ways on uh, passing on their message and their current victory. Yeah, you know, and I'm not also not sure how long before the people of the southeast, you know, tell them no. You know, because, you know, one Monday after the next Monday and by the third Monday, I, I'm sure that a lot of people would not even bother, um, you know, uh, staying at home. Um, at some point, you know, this whole goodwill is going to completely wear off and everyone's going to be tired. Like you said, you know, you don't want it to get to a point where people start to fight back um, at uh, the IPOB. Um, and it feels, you know, and one of the things I said earlier, it feels like, you know, they have become the same tyrants that they are complaining about. Um, a hungry man is an angry man, and it gets to a point when a man knows that he has nothing to lose, and especially when it comes to issue of um, not being able to feed himself like family, he will fight back. 
And we, it will result to a situation where people might just decide to take the laws into their hand and start moving from one house to the other. And like we saw during the Bakasi days in the Southeast, and they'll start attacking passive members of IPOP. So that is why I say they should be very strategic in their, in their approach and not take uh, people for granted. If you think you have the upper hand, uh, well, oh, well, uh, it will come to a point. An average woman is a res- very resolute person. And uh, where, yes, when he wants to fight for what he believes in, he fights for it. But if for any reason he sees no reason to do that again, and he sees you tramping on his um, right, on uh, his uh, miss of livelihood, he will fight back. That is an average evil man for you. He will fight you back. So um, I should be careful. But my take on this take is that it also shows lack of governance and um, connect. There's a disconnect between the governor governance and those being governed, and with the state government. If a state, the state governors cannot be able to talk to their people and they obey them, but rather um, obey IPO, then that shows you that there's a serious problem within the Southeast. Oh. That means there's a disconnect between the people and the governors of the Southeast. And oh. you should just look at um, what they are doing currently. Okay, now let's also quickly speak about the um, NARD strike. It says on the Nigerian Tribune, reps fail to stop resident doctor strike. Meeting continues today. Uh, quickly also share your thoughts on that one. Well, the Minister of Health, who is a doctor, say he will, uh, not Minister of Health, Minister of Labor, uh, Dr. Nguyen, say that he will invoke his right um, on whatever, <laughs> on the doctors. And um, there are people you don't threaten. Medical doctors are one of them. Uh, lawyers are another set of people. And some categories of workers, these are professionals. You didn't send them to school. They spend their money going to school. They are professional. You need them more than they need you. So it's, it, there should be a more coordinated ways of approaching the issue rather than the um, uh, servant and um, uh, or that kind of attitude that's been displayed by some of our government officials. How can you threaten a doctor? What do you, if you threaten, if you say you are going to sack a doctor, are you going to produce doctors within within two hours? Do you know how long to produce a doc? What it takes to produce a doc? Even if you serve a doctor, a doctor can go and start his own, uh, his own small clinic somewhere. He'll be making money. Why are you even paying him in government? So I think the best is for us to be able to make sure that um, this is resolved. Uh, a lot of people are dying, whether you like it or not. People have been taken to hospitals. That been, I know somebody that was taken to a hospital yes, that was rejected in one of the government hospitals. The, the papers also speak about the cholera outbreak that has killed more than 800 people um, in seven months. That's, exactly, exactly. I don't have any... A rise in COVID cases with the data variants. What are you talking about? So this is a peculiar, uh, this is a situation we find ourselves where the government should trust somebody and make sure that they be able to meet the doctors halfway. I don't think they are human. By their profession, there are some ethics they've taken, and that is to save human lives. I believe that if the government can be able to live up to expectation and be able to meet some of their demands, I'm sure they will call it. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, there is this oath that doctors take. Uh, when they are graduating, and part of it is that, irrespective of whatever, human life comes first. But I believe that government should also do the need. If you have an agreement with, uh, with with the doctors, then you should be able to make sure you meet up to that agreement. But here, agreements are just signed on papers without any level of um, adherence and implementation. And that has always been what um, has gotten us to. Don't worry, don't also forget that ASU, ASU is also gearing up for theirs, and um, it's not good enough. Okay. Um, finally, if you can do this in a minute, there's a story on the Nigerian Tribune. It says, uh, court stops federal government from collecting value-added tax, says it is a state tax. To me, that's fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic. Some of you saying this for long. And, um, but um, it's, a, it's a river state uh, high court that delivered that judgment. Yes. It by the, but constitutionally, I think it may be right. But the FRS have already said that going to um, appeal that in the court of appeal, going to the court of appeal. But look at it from this point. We have already said it that states that don't contribute to VAT should not be part of that VAT. Let's take, for example, in the North. The North, most part of the North don't believe in sales of alcohol. They destroy alcohols, they destroy bottles, they do bars and the rest of them. But when you are sharing VAT from alcohol, related, most of them get, practically a lot of them get VAT from that. If you understand what I'm trying to say, so yes. you cannot say on one hand what you don't you don't need something, and on the other hand you also collect it. So that is 
more reason why um, is both um, the, the bad and that um, uh, uh, pay, pay uh, as it were, I can't remember what it is now, but I think um, it's good that that particular law has been tested. Um, let's see how um, FRS will react. But if that law stays, then, then it will bring a, a lot of relief to most of the states. Who is it? Lagos, Rivers, and some of these states get the highest number of bats across Nigeria. But what do they get in return? The federal government practically takes everything and just give them something out of it, which is not good enough. All right. Chris Wanda, thank you so much. Um, as always, we like uh, hearing your perspective on uh, major stories making headlines. We wish you a great day ahead. Thank you very much. Do have a nice day. All right, stay with us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. After this short break, we're going back in history to tell you things that happened today on the 10th of August in 2003 and in 1981. We'll be back.